Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Dear friends, let's see what we have got in the PIB of 4th and 5th April. Now, identify the person that you can see on your screen. The last person was Avni Chaturvedi. She created a history by becoming the first Indian woman to fly fighter aircraft solo. With this, the special topic that we are going to talk about today is pertaining to uh, you can say social networking sites plus uh, you can add uh, data protection and us where do we stand and what are the steps we should take we'll go through some steps taken by europe we'll also analyze the situation of usa and then we will compare it with our country very important topic because uh, if you go back in 2017 then you find this data protection not data protection but this thing uh, called right to privacy was discussed and it, in, in fact it's still going on in our supreme court the other thing is just recently we saw this uh, facebook and uh, uh, facebook and this cambridge analytica case so very important topic in itself there are high chances that they may ask you a question in your mains examination with this dear friends these are two links here from where you can download pdf of this lecture i am on facebook i am on twitter as well with this uh, study iq provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams as you can see on your screen find out more check out studyiq.com if you have any question or queries you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen or you can also utilize this chat support that we have on our portal first item that we have is coming from prime minister's office now before i start my discussion on the things that we have on our table today let me tell you that because we are taking 4th and 5th april together so this video is naturally going to be bit lengthy uh, when i say bit lengthy that does not mean that it will be boring not at all i'll try my level best to make sure that uh, all this content that i that is important for you is catered to you in the most uh, better way as possible but bear with me because uh, the thing is normally you know this the range of time of PIB analysis is somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes and this is because on regular basis you are being provided with important items but from now on we will cover two dates together till we reach this uh, proper date right because we are a bit lagging behind but anyways uh, let's crack on so prime minister's office uh, basically prime minister said that government is walking on the path shown by B.R. Ambedkar and what was the path that was shown by B.R. Ambedkar he basically worked for the poorest of the poor and this is right as well B.R. Ambedkar let me tell you is a very important person in our history apart from that he himself is a topic for your examination so make sure you have a very good grip on B.R. Ambedkar I'm not just talking about the facts that are associated with B.R. Ambedkar you should also analyze his life and uh, you can also analyze his viewpoint why he used to do certain things and uh, what were the circumstances at that point of time and things like that then you have uh, mr modi said that harmony and togetherness are at the core of baba sahib ambedkar's idols he also talked about jal sakti baba sahib who was very experienced a sailor when i say sailor i mean to say that he has traveled a lot uh, so he was uh, he, he visited usa uh, UK and at that point of time uh, this was the only way you have right waterways for international traveling waterways so he was a bit experienced with this thing and uh, he has always talked about Jal Sakti he said that uh, waterways irrigation canal networks and ports can can basically change the face of our economy and let me tell you he was not just a constitutional expert with this he was a very good economist as well and uh, the research papers and the, the the items that were published by Baba Sahib Am Ambedkar was of top quality uh, and even today uh, they are considered a very good you can say understanding of Baba Sahib Ambedkar on economics and uh, these are the things uh, we have talked about waterways we have talked about irrigation and ports and other things remember how waterways are are much greener they are much cheaper they require less energy compared to other source of transport or the medium of transport so in this way waterways can change definitely the face of our economy apart from that he also wished uh, uh, people this national maritime day that is that is falling on the 4th of 
April. Moving on to another item, this is a very important decision taken by the cabinet. Cabinet today approved the Protection of Human Rights Act Amendment, Human Rights Amendment Bill 2018. And uh, basically the bill proposes to include women representative as a deemed member of National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. A small but very important step taken by cabinet. The other thing is that we know that this human rights violations are a sort of ongoing thing. They do take place but you have to take a stand against this sort of things and uh, human rights violations are basically done by you can say that human when we say that human rights violation we are talking about state that is government they are doing something that is violating your human rights and it's not that only state even private citizens or a group of citizens can can basically you can say create a situation where this human rights of uh, an individual or a group of people may get violated so it is better to protect them we have to for a just and a good society with this dear friends the cabinet has also approved this closure of bscl bscl stands for this burn standard company limited basically it was making loss from last 10 years its um, physical as well as financial performance was literally very bad and when you close down this sort of companies basically we are saving huge amount of public funds because to run this sort of organizations you have to pump in money and when government pumps money in or when government basically provides money it is exchequer's money so this money can be utilized for some for, for some better things like uh, investing it uh, in, uh, in in something that will create more jobs and something that will create uh, you can say a better societal environment for our people and of course, uh, those of like 500 and, and, uh, 508 employees who are going to basically, because of this shutdown, they are going to lose this job. So they are going to get this VRS benefit as well. Moving on to another item, very small piece of news, but very important for you to understand this thing. See here what the news says that Odisha Governor Satyapal Malik today approved the premature release of 24 life convicts that were in jail across 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 the state of Odisha so in different jails there were 24 life convicts now what do you understand from this thing from this thing you understand that governor right a governor of a state he or she has this power to to pardon this uh, life convicts if someone is in jail then government can a uh, governor can uh, cut down his or her you can say this uh, sentence and with this you also would be aware about this thing that president too has a bit of power so what i reckon you guys is I'm, I'm sure you have some good books on constitution go through this chapters that are that are based on president and governor and make sure you do compare right uh, this uh, you will find a table in a, in a in a good books generally lakshmi kant people do follow it's a good book no doubt and if you go through this uh, Lakshmi Khan, then you will find a table that is provided in which you have specific details regarding what are the things that president can do and what are the things that the governor can do as far as this prison or sentence is concerned the thing i'm the reason why i'm emphasizing on this thing is first of all it is part of current affairs the other thing is if you if you go back and analyze this past papers then you will find that we have already got many questions of governor right how a governor can be removed whether we have uh, any you can say procedure to remove governor or not yes and no etc so now you won't find this type of questions there are chances that they may ask you this sort of question as well that uh, can a governor basically or what are the powers of governor identify the wrong statement etc so you should be well aware about this sort of pardoning power of governor and President. Moving on to another item, it is about India, Japan and USA. By the way, this one I am leaving for you guys to sort out as a part of your self-study, right? You get to do some self-study as well. India, Japan, USA. Now, when these three countries, when we are talking about this trilateral meeting between India, Japan, USA, of course, the first thing that will be on table is South China Sea or else you can say that Indo-Pacific region. We are talking about free, peaceful and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. Now, dear friends, uh, I have provided you maps many a times and this is the right time for you guys to 
to use this map that you have or the picture that you have created in your mind because of because you are been provided and with this maps and I do have maps ready uh, with me right uh, good maps are already I have all these pictures it will take just one second for me to stick it here but I haven't because I want you guys to use your own picture that you have in your head so uh, pay attention here now India Pacific region when we are talking about free right so free peaceful and inclusive Indo-Pacific region so we have uh, Indian Ocean here right from Indian Ocean you travel on the eastern side and then finally you come here to Pacific Ocean in between you have this route uh, from Indian Ocean say for example nearby Andaman and Nicobar you have this Strait of Malacca from Strait of Malacca you enter into Strait of Malacca then you are in literally South China Sea and f when you exit South China Sea you enter into Pacific Ocean so South China Sea basically is a link it's a very important link that is connecting this Indo-Pacific region and when you have this China's basically China is claiming or in fact as we are speaking now China has literally conquered this whole uh, South China Sea so because of this thing it will create and this sort of uh, basically territorial expansion of China will impact very negatively as far as this world trade and other things are concerned navigation is concerned so this is not right and this is the reason why all these three countries and there are other countries we have also talked about this quad uh, you add Australia in this thing and you have this quad group and we are also talking about quad plus two in which we are trying to include France and United Kingdom because uh, they have some islands here in Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean so uh, we have to come together to counter China or else this expansionist theory of China is going to be very detrimental for world peace and world order. External Affairs Ministry Susma Swaraj is on her three-day visit to Azerbaijan. Now, Azerbaijan is a country that has a bit of connection with me as well. The reason why I have connection is because my sister has been here for a very long period of time. She's basically a structural engineer. And here you have this Caspian Sea. So uh, she used to work for this. There was a big contract of British Petroleum where they used to extract uh, this oil and other natural resources. Basically oil that they have in Caspian Sea. So you have one more feather in your hat that in Caspian Sea you find oil. If you go down a bit south here then you will find a country called Iran right we have talked about Iran as well when Hassan Rouhani was here so Azerbaijan the extra information that I have for you guys is that Azerbaijan is a very beautiful country the other thing is that basically they know most of the things about Indian culture the reason is that they play our means if you if you walk down the street of this capital Baku then you will find that they in in their taxis in their radios and other places you will find Indian songs this uh, Bollywood songs Indian film cinema songs are famous over there they don't understand our language but they do enjoy our songs apart from that uh, they have this uh, movies right our Indian movies they watch Indian movies they love Indian movies and based on this thing they have uh, came to know about our culture quite a bit so there is a sort of connection between India and Azerbaijan in this way now anyways uh, the thing is dear friends is our minister is there for this non aligned movement non aligned movement was started during this cold war era and the main reason for this non aligned movement was that we were not supporting either USA or USSR we decided to be in the middle path and it was not just we alone we were founding member of this Nam and at that point of time basically many countries right many uh, countries of Africa many countries of Asia and other countries also joined Nam that is non aligned movement and uh, this movement at present if you go through non aligned movement then you will find that it is not performing that well uh, but it has huge potential at least uh, when we are attending this non aligned movement we are giving out a signal that we were a, f a founding member and uh, we do believe we are committed to the purpose and principle of of this non aligned movement and recently we have also shown this we have seen this basically um this problem that is going on between between western world and russia isn't it we have seen this 
because of this uh, Skripal, uh, Skripal incident of this uh, Salisbury in UK, you know, these two uh, father and daughter, they were found uh, unconscious because of uh, some chemical attacks on them, this nerve agent attack. And because of this thing, these diplomats are being sent by both this, expelled by both this Russia and Western world. So this is again believed as a, as a start of Cold War era. A cold war era and here non-aligned movement can play a very important role. Apart from that, in this non-aligned movement meeting, uh, Susma Swaraj said that this is basically this terrorism, right, is a big threat. We have talked about terrorism as well quite a lot of time. But the thing is, uh, here you have small countries, right, uh, countries that are still developing are part of this non-aligned movement. And if we want to ensure that the whole world is peaceful, it is safe, then we have to work together we have to provide a bit of handhold to all these countries who are lagging behind at the same time we also need to rope in this developed countries uh, countries though countries with uh, good good intelligence officers they have a good uh, network around the world so this sort of countries as well can be taken on board and the sad thing is as far as this combating terrorism is concerned it is all about means countries are just barking but there are they are not biting means they are not when it comes to delivering result, right, uh, uh, most of the countries are providing some sort of excuses. Things are not moving on. And uh, terrorists, uh, they are becoming more global. And uh, they, they, they are basically, at present, uh, if you go through the figures, then you will find that there is no country on this planet that is not affected by terrorism directly or indirectly. With this, uh, we have to also end this double standard games uh, played by many countries like you have China, right? Uh, China, when Pakistan is conducting something, uh, then China will take its side. But when China is affected by terrorism, then it will, it will cry out loud. So this sort of double standards are not acceptable at all. And uh, with this, there is a big blow for Pakistan because 139 terrorist individuals and entities, total 139, operating from Pakistani soil has been identified by United Nations Security Council. And when we say United Nations Security Council, remember that you have China as well in it. So it's going to be a big blow for Pakistan. And uh, you have all these different gangs and these groups like Hafiz Saeed's group is there. Then you have this uh, other people's group, Osama bin Laden's hair and apparent Al-Qaeda's main person, this Jawahiri and other people are there. Daud Ibrahim is a, a fugitive is also believed to be there living in rawalpindi and karachi so big blow for pakistan here now rbi has kept all its key rates unchanged now what do you understand by key rates basically we are talking about this repo rate now if you don't know what base what repo rate is all about let let me explain it to you very briefly repo rate stands for a rate or interest rate on which rbi will give money to lower banks or say for example sbi you have sbi that is a lower bank rbi is a central bank so if sbi requires a bit of money then it will knock the doors of rbi then rbi will give say for example one lakh rupees uh, to this uh, sbi but it won't be a sort of charity or grant money sbi will have to provide security sbi will give this uh, gsex that is government security and rbi will charge a sort of interest on this SBI's loan so naturally when it will charge this interest SBI will again when it will give this loan to its borrower or final consumer it will charge a bit extra on what it is paying to RBI and the difference that you have is your profit so this is what repo rate is all about that when RBI is giving money to SBI on a certain uh, interest rate that is called repo rate and just in case if rbi wants money from sbi as a loan or if it wants to control or tighten this flow of money why it has to tighten we'll talk about it but if it uh, wants money from sbi then it has to pay interest as well and this is called as reverse repo rate i hope these things are clear to you now now let's talk about this repo rate and why we need repo rate and this i said this thing that uh, controlling or tightening the flow of money now, things associated with money are called monetary policy, right? They are called monetary. So, uh, 
many a times you know this fiscal and monetary policy they are a bit scary words uh, i have observed and many times students feel that these things are very difficult to understand no it's not it's very basic you have been doing this sort of things on regular basis right the things that we from our very childhood you know when you go out there to buy something for your for your home for the first time at that point of time since then you have entered a market uh, you have been a customer but you have been consumer for uh, since your birth because of all the things that we buy are uh, basically means uh, things that we buy when you are born your parents used to buy things that were for you so you were the final consumer and your parents were customer but uh, when you started purchasing things uh, either for yourself or for your home at that point of time you entered this market so we have this very good experience of buying and selling things in the market now the thing is uh, if you have a you can say if money is easily available in the market now when i say easily available let's take your example say for example if you have to travel from uh, delhi to mumbai right and you have if i give you 500 rupees and in this 500 rupees you have to finish your journey so you'll be very careful about about uh, how you are spending your money because you have just 500 rupees you'll buy this railway ticket uh, and uh, that one as well you'll buy the cheapest one and whatever money you have you you'll use it for your food and other things uh, whilst you're traveling from delhi to mumbai or other way around but if i give you say for example fifty thousand rupees uh, to travel uh, from delhi to mumbai then i'm sure most of you will catch a flight and then you will also do a bit of shopping in in the airport and then you will have this expensive coffee and other things because you have 50,000 rupees right so here what I'm trying to tell you is that the value of money will come down because you have extra money uh, you will you won't care about 500 rupees but if you have less money then you will be very careful about how you're spending your money same thing happens in the market as well if the flow of money is if, if there is if money is easily available if you go and knock the doors of banks and if you are been given money or a loan at a very low rate of interest one percent or something then you will find the money flow will go up at the same time the value of money will come down but when this interest rate goes up if it is 10 percent say for example then it will become expensive and people will be very careful when it comes to spending money so this way how it rbi controls this uh, uh, this money flow in the market and the other thing is uh, the reason why it has to control this thing is because when the value of money comes down uh, people will chase or more money will chase less goods right or whatever goods you have limited goods that we have right uh, it again talks about basically demand and supply basic principle of demand and supply so the more money is chasing goods so the price will go up and other way around right if you have uh, excessive goods and less money then price of goods will come down so to control this inflation as well it has to it has this tool monetary tool in its hand macroeconomic tool basically to control this monetary flow and uh, good news is that gdp growth is going to be 7.4 percent in 2018-19 and uh, rbi's target is to keep this inflation rate below four percent generally four percent is uh, basically you have this four percent target then you can go plus two and minus two so the range is two percent to six percent and the midterm is uh, this four or uh, mid range is this four percent but below four percent something 3.5 or between four is is considered safe so that's what rbi is targeting at present RBI has said that food inflation is going to be all right because uh, uh, we are going to have this normal monsoon and uh, because of uh, this stand of RBI it has not changed this uh, this rates uh, we have seen this uh, uh, the, the, this stock market has gone up uh, with this uh, moving on to another item it is a, it is coming from president and very uh, good words uh, you can say coming from the president's office the president basically was present in this 34th annual session of uh, fiki ladies organization and here he said that if more women 
become part of the workforce in our country, both household incomes as well as GDP will go up. Very interesting point here. Do note down this point. When I say note down, do keep this point in your mind. It will help you a lot. You find at least one question based on woman empowerment. May it be in form of essay or in your interview or in your general studies. So, Whenever you are writing about this thing and if, if you think that this line, you can utilize this line, then remember that the more women participating in our economy or as a workforce, the household income will go up and the GDP will rise and as a nation will become a prosperous nation because 50% of our population is of women and uh, we know that uh, women's participation in economy is, when, when I say economy, I'm talking about this workforce in terms of numbers they are still not matching men and this is uh, something that we have to change we have to provide them a sort of equal platform and when i'm saying we i'm not saying that men has to provide it it is the society together government and every stakeholders together we have to provide this this platform to women the other thing is uh, uh, this FLO, that is this Fiki Ladies Organization, President said that it's not enough that you just train them or give them skill uh, for jobs. Uh, you have to encourage them so that they become not only job seekers but job givers as well. And that's basically everything regarding this item. Now, uh, you have this uh, update or you can say as a curtain raiser, Prime Minister is going to visit Sweden and United Kingdom on 16th and 20th or from 16th to 20th of this month he's going to visit sweden first where he will uh, attend this india nordic summit and then he will attend this commonwealth heads of government meeting in united kingdom now if you have this three important items a very important item here uh, baba Epo baba atomic research center that is bark uh, they have uh, developed a two mutants of rice, two variety of rice. One is Trombe Raipo rice and the second one is Trombe Konkan Kolam. And remember the names uh, just in case if you find an MCQ on this thing and you have uh, one Kaupi that is Trombe Kaupi 901. You don't have to remember this name. But just remember Trombe Kaupi and this one is developed by Bark. They are going to be released very soon and then you have other items as well as you can see here that uh, are being been worked on by this bark and hopefully we'll find some more items being released by this bark now coming on to our special topic digital world and people now if we go back a couple of weeks ago right uh, we used to trust this uh, google facebook and other organizations we used to we used to speak and talk this thing uh, quite you can say we used to appreciate this uh, this world this digital world that has been provided by google and facebook we used to talk about this thing that uh, they have uh, connected the whole world they are spreading freedom people now can express uh, their 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 views and other things and this era of repression is basically gone because of this digital services and this platform that is provided by google and facebook we also used to believe this thing that uh, Silicon Valley corporations could not do anything wrong with us at all. And uh, when they entered, when this, when this technologies or you can say when these companies entered into the market, the traditional way of doing things got disrupted. Basically, many things are outdated now, isn't it? Like, uh, of course, there is a charm of writing a letter. Uh, a handwritten letter and sending it via post uh, it's a, a sort of a sort of nostalgic it gives you this feeling but when it comes to utility we are using emails we are using this real-time chat and other things messaging nowadays even people are reducing their uh, the, the, the conversation that they do over the phone they are using more uh, sort of text and chatting and things like that and which is which is good as well not but anyways uh, they have basically what i'm trying to say here is that uh, they have changed uh, positively the way we used to do things or interact with each other and uh, we used to appreciate them quite a lot but nowadays uh, they are facing this crisis of uh, trust because we know that uh, this whole system or this opaque algorithms that they use uh, they basically control our lives in secret ways uh, it is also well understood by the people that uh, it's not free basically all these things that we are using we consider that all these things are free they are not free basically 
they consider us as a product they collect our our data and they share it with other companies and based on these things uh, you can produce or you can design your products and services and you can market them in such a way or you can advertise all these products in such a way that uh, that we will buy them because uh, they are based on our psychological and micro analysis and other things so it is right time for us to to think about it like what we should do about it see artificial intelligence is just around the corner there are you can say huge amount of research going on on this artificial intelligence at present and it is again going to be very disruptive but from now on we should think about regulating the social networking sites as well as this artificial intelligence and we should do it in such a way that we without hampering innovation we don't want to choke hold in uh, innovation all we need to do is we need to ensure that our data is not collected or misused that is basically in long run it is against the people who are using these technologies the other thing is that uh, france president emmanuel macron and very important for us to to observe what uh, france president has said because uh, it's uh, something that is coming from europe as well so he outlined that this technologies should work for citizens right it should not be that uh, citizens are working for this technologies apart from that he also said that we need to trap or tap this uh, artificial intelligence it is going to be useful for healthcare mobility defense and other items but at the same time uh, this uh, algorithmic uh, accountability should be there and it should not exploit uh, the citizens who are using it now as far as this europe is concerned see the thing is uh, europe has uh, has applied a heavy penalty on google as well because of this data or protection sort of thing and uh, europe is very strict and the world can learn many things from europe because if you compare uh, the way things are going on in europe and usa then you will find that usa in in usa basically the administration will give this free hand to the companies to design their own rules and regulation it will just say basically that make sure you are not doing anything wrong that's it right but when it comes to europe it is the government or this uh, european system that will control that will make sure that the people of europe and their data is not exploited by all this us or silicon valley giants or any other companies and uh, it is the user who who is uh, having a great amount of control over his data there is a gr great clarity as well the words they use this contract terminology and other things are very simple to understand so something similar can be done here in our country as well as far as our country is concerned as far as our laws are concerned we are still lagging far behind when it comes to uh, data protection we are still using this uh, this information and technology act of uh, early 2000 this was uh, out in early 2000 and we know that things have changed much water has been has flown over uh, ganges uh, so we need to change we need to have a bit more up to date laws and we can have this late starter advantage we can learn from uh, things that are been designed by europe and then we can have a bit of customization and through this thing we can sort out this thing because we are going to use the social networking sites and sites and other things and it is helping us as well in development in business in other e-health sector and other sectors other things we cannot uh, stop it or we don't want to stop it completely but we need to regulate it with this dear friends that's everything that we have got in today's discussion these are your answers new questions make sure you check out studyiq.com for more on pen drive and tablet courses and uh, please give me your like if you have learned something out of it uh, thank you very much jay hind